Let's give you a little taste of what that entails right now in... Love Letters. Love Letters to Kelly. Let's go down one then, I guess. Uh, <laughs> dear Kelly, you are the love expert. I am. Um, I am struggling a lot lately in my depression. I am raising four children, all under the age of 10. I don't have a relationship with my mother, and I don't have a village. It's just me. My husband works, and the moments together are few and far between. I find myself yelling, screaming. It's a constant in our home now, which used to be my safe place to be. I feel so underappreciated and exhausted. We fight so much, lots of name-calling, and back and forth, and it's not good for either of us or the children. It might help to mention that I am raising three children I didn't give birth to. The mother is very absent for two of them, and I adopted my youngest daughter. I was blessed to have my son a year or so after my brother passed away. I don't want my marriage to fail. I know how hard it is to come from a broken home, and our oldest girls have been through enough. Any advice, please, Rochelle? Oh, Rochelle, that's so hard. Um, if you don't have a village, you need to build one. Yeah, you need to Build a village. And maybe that's through getting the kids involved. I mean, you're like, you're giving me another thing to add to my plate. But getting the kids involved in, you know, sports, recreational leagues, it's not not always super expensive. But that's when you meet other moms and other dads and you develop friendships. And that's when you can you build your own tribe. Right. Mm -hmm. um, at school, if there's any way for you to, you know, get involved in, you know, as a classroom mom, there's ways I need. I know it's like, oh, my God, Kelly, you're giving me something else to do. But. I think that's going to be really important. My mother also gave me a book, and I don't remember the name of it. Um, it's about, yeah, I, I'm saying this wrong. It's about parenting without yelling. Yeah. Um, because my mother told me, she said she was afraid that, because I was a big yeller, and I still struggle with that. I'm not a beater. I don't spank. I yell. And my mom said she's afraid that. I learned that from her, and she wanted to break that yelling cycle with this book. So, I mean, that might be a place you can start, too, um, that can give you maybe some alternatives. But you're justified in being frustrated and feeling overwhelmed. That's very real. Um, I know whenever I'm going through dark, dark times, moving, getting your body outside, enjoying the uh, sunshine, taking the kids to the park just so you can be in fresh air and let them run around. That's also very helpful too. But your husband and you just need to sit down and you need to have a heart to heart with him like I am struggling and, and I need help where, yeah. you know, and maybe he has some practical uh, solutions as well. But that's, that's where I'd start. Yeah. I hope it's that tough. helps. And I'm sorry you feel that way. I know a lot of us parents feel that way, just yelling at oh, our yeah. kids, you know. But this too shall pass. It's a season, and if you can get through it, you know. You got this, it's Rochelle. Hard. Love letters. Love letters to Kelly. I just sent her uh, a text. I hope this is a heartbreaker, Kelly. You so say this every time. I hope she's. I hope we she's all listening. know that you send a text. Dear every Kelly, time. you are the love expert. <laughs> I this, am. This isn't about my relationship, but my mom. She's in a verbal and mentally abusive marriage. Where do I start? My mom and stepdad have been together for four years. When they started dating, they were extremely happy. In fact, I had never seen my mom so happy. Three years later, and this is the worst I've ever seen my mom. Oh. He constantly tries to make my mom look stupid. He cussed my mom out multiple times and even kicked me and my mom out at 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Just this weekend, they got into a fight, and she kicked me out because she felt it wasn't safe for me to be there. Mm. She keeps trying to make her marriage work, and from an outsider perspective, there isn't anything to work out. I've had many talks with my mom about the patterns of my stepdad, and every time I do, she makes the excuse that she has screwed up in the marriage. Kelly, I don't know what to do. I've tried to talk to my mom, and deep down, I know she knows I'm right, but I can't get her to listen to me. That's from Kai. Well, if it was just, you know, if it was, it was just a disrespect issue, I would have a different piece of advice, but it sounds like this is now a violent issue, and I am not equipped I don't want to give you the wrong piece of advice because when a woman or a man tries to leave an abusive relationship, it can often go very wrong. And I do not, I don't want to give you some flippant advice. So I recommend in these situations that you contact a women's shelter, a, an abuse shelter. Even if you're not the abused person, you they can give you give some you tools yeah. to help the other person 
re- recognize what can happen and give them the tools to get out safely. And how to properly support them. Yeah, in those because, you know, abusers don't start out right out the gate socking you in the face. They, they don't start out that way. They, that. They, they get that trust. They get that love. And then once they know they have you, then the abuse builds and builds and builds until... You know, it could be a tragic ending, and you don't want that for your mother. Right. And if it was just he was rude and disrespectful, That's I'd have a thing. completely different answer for you, and I would give you my, you know, flippant advice. But this is too, this is too important. He's got her to the point where mo- the mom is saying it's her fault, you know. That's... And also get my child out because it's too dangerous for my yeah. child. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not So good. That's, yeah. that you need to contact a local shelter and find out an abuse a crisis center and find out what you can do as the daughter. Yeah, and maybe get mom to go with you to one of these uh Meetings. Well, they can tough, maybe help her with that. Try, yeah. 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 Wow. Love letters. Love letters to Kelly. Dear Kelly, you are the love expert. I am. I don't know if my heart will ever fully heal. About a year and a half ago, my fiance left me for someone that they met at their new job. I was completely shattered, and it had taken me so long to feel okay again. But every time I think I'm at the finish line, he pops up with a random phone call or a message. What a jerk. Mm. We'll go back to our normal conversations for a few days and then go silent again for months. The emotional roller coaster this has on me is making me sick. Whether intentional or not, I feel like they have to know what they're, that what they're doing is hurting me. I can't bring myself to block their number. Why? We, ha- we have so much history and they're my comfort person, but this is also bringing me so much hurt and I don't know what to do. How can I get over this relationship without blocking them out? Is that even possible? Please help. And that is from Allie. Why are you keeping the door open to a possible? This is it. You're not willing to give it up. Yeah. If he came back to you, this is you're leaving the possibility open that he will come back into your life and y'all can just pick up where you left off. So if you say you absolutely are not going to listen to me when I say block his number, what else can I give you? You need to go out there and find somebody else. The best way to get over someone is to find somebody new. And they there's a vulgar way people say it, but that's it doesn't have to be, you know, what I'm... The what is it? Say it. You can get under someone else. Whatever. Oh, got you. But you go out there and you find somebody else and you start getting those giddy feelings for somebody else. That's how you get over somebody. But you're not even allowing yourself that. you got to have a moment of strength and courage and say, okay, I'm going to block him and be done with it. He is manipulating your emotions, which is abusive, and just downright mean. Yeah. And some people do that because they know they can. And when they're bored, it's like, hmm, let me see what she's doing. And just toying messing with, with you. You. You, sh- you need to get angry. That's what you need to do. I mean, you've yep. probably grieved the relationship. You've, there's so many stages of grief, which I can never remember. Robert even gave me the list. And I don't know where I put the list. But there's the Hunger. anger, the denial, and the grief, and the acceptance. Tired. you got to go through the anger part. I think that's what you're missing. Yeah. And when you get really angry, you delete him, mm-hmm. block him, accept and accept it. And then go out there and start swiping. Go, go have some fun. Itchy. Waste an, or waste another year sitting around waiting to see if he's going to message you again. Mm-hmm. No. So annoying. Mm-mm. Wasting your time. Yep. Love letters. Love letters to Kelly. Dear Kelly, you are the love expert. I am. Four years ago, my husband had a physical affair with two people that were my friends at the time. Two? Two. Whoa. Whoa. When these came out, he completely apologized and admitted to all the wrongdoing. We tried to stay friends with one of them and their family as we were all close to them. Why? And he said he had no other attachment to that wife other than friendship. But I found out about a few phone call phone mm-hmm. conversations later with him just saying he was trying to keep in touch with the family as they have moved off. I admit I am not one to easily forgive and was not putting much effort into that friendship with the husband, wife, two kids that our children were also friends with. So I understand him wanting to keep the ties between us, but it just felt a little weird. My question is, do you think anything else was going on after the fact or should I forgive everything and stop bringing it up after all this time? I have not seen or heard about any communication since two years ago and my husband swears that what that, that there was nothing else going on other than trying to have us all remain friends. We have finally parted ways, I think, but I have a hard time believing there was no emotional attachment. Well, there was emotional. He obviously. hooked up with two friends? Did he hook two up with friends. the husband and the wife? I'm not, I'm no, 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 no two, two, friends. two of her two friends. Okay. Dang, That's what I'm gathering that from is, it. There was absolutely, if maybe with the uh, one friend it was all physical, but uh, absolutely there was an emotional connection with the second one that he wants to stay in touch yeah, with. Yeah, that's but not he good. Said, but she says she has no proof that he's talked to her for two years, so maybe that's finally, maybe it's in your because head. she moved out of sight, out of mind. That doesn't make what he did right. I bet you that husband doesn't know she had an affair with him. Ooh. Because I don't think a man would... He's still with her? No. Yeah. He, she said that, he said yeah. they moved away. Uh, mm. 
I don't I mean, know. If he knew this was going on, do you think that he would stand for no. that? I mean, Just, let's all stay friends. No. no. I know that's what I would do, and it wouldn't be staying. No, no. you wouldn't be staying. Be the opposite. No, Period. I would, be, I would the opposite. not be staying. I'd be moving away with everyone. So myself. you are free to be with him because I am out of here. Peace out. Yeah. Wow. It's easier said than done when you have children and stuff involved. But what are you asking me? He had an emotional affair as well as a physical affair, at least with this one friend. She's asking, um, do you think anything else was going yes. on? Yes. And yes, also... Um, <laughs> also, um, should she forgive everything? No. Because no. he oh, ain't not, asking for it, he, is he? She can forgive. Don't forget. He's, and, just, and he's, don't. he's rationalizing. Yeah. I'm trying to stay friends with her. He's not apologizing for what he did. No. What he did was wrong. But you made the decision to stay, and here you are two years later still... Bring it up. Bring it, you know, you know and regurgitating wants, it. And she wants to know if she need, should stop bringing it up. Well, here's the thing. If you decide to stay with a cheater, who and the man... I mean... You can't keep throwing it in his face. If a man True. says he's True. sorry and works every day to show you that he is faithful and loyal to you, that he is sorry and remorseful, and is validating a reason for you to stay. But this man that you married is not doing that. So you can keep bringing it up, but if it's truly dead after two years... And staying friends with them, it's like keeping the options open how and the do door you know? kind of slightly ajar. You know? right, I mean, right, how are right. you for sure? You have this element of doubt that he could still be lying to you and that you're he sneaking needs to around. Cut that communication He's off. Also, if There's... your friend is sleeping with your husband, that ain't your friend. No. no. And right. I t- to expect you to stay as friends, that's just twisted and sick. No, no. You need counseling. Es- you need therapy, honestly. You need to hit the escape key on that. But if somebody does escape make the decision key. to forgive a cheater, and he, you know, like I said, if he is doing the work to show you he is not going to cheat anymore, then you can't keep bringing it up because you're you're doomed. Wow. But trying to keep the door open is not. No, doing he ain't done with that. He wasn't done with that. No, no. Just there, just in case, like the last guy. Yeah, He's just, just kind of leaving it open, just in case. Door open, yeah. yeah, you need to do therapy to figure out why you were okay with that. Yeah, you know, at least try to have a screen door, like the hard door is closed, uh-huh. but open. But he's got the screen door there that's closed, but you can still air can still get through it. Is that a good analogy? Sure. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. I like your analogies. Thank you, JC. I'll let, uh, yeah. You know what? Well, thank you for agreeing with me right <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I like that. agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. thank you. Like a screen door. Like a screen door.